Welcome back to Every Other Carl. I'm Carl, and today I'm making gambrel roof trusses for my 10 by 16 shed. I'll show you the details of how I'm building my trusses in a minute, but I think it's important to explain my roof choice first. A gambrel roof, also known as a barn style or Dutch style roof, has four slopes meeting at a single ridge. The top two slopes are shallow angles and the bottom two are steep. I decided to go with this style roof because I'm adding a loft space and I wanted to maximize headroom. For me, that means four and a half to five feet of headroom. These types of trusses are also fairly easy to build and use less materials than some other roof styles. If you build them well, gambrel trusses are quite strong, but there are a couple potential downsides to this truss style, which could include somewhat lower tolerances to heavy snow loads. Since the top angles are fairly shallow, snow can accumulate up there. Also, since the lower angles are steep, this style of roof could be more susceptible to high winds. Now, I don't live in a super high snow accumulation area or a super high wind area. Also, there are ways to mitigate these weaknesses and make gambrel trusses much stronger. I used a few of those, including using 2x6 lumber instead of 2x4, using construction adhesive on my gussets, more on that later, and using hurricane tie brackets to anchor the trusses to the frame of my building. I'll be installing those in a later video when I install the roof. To make gambrel trusses like this, you need four main ingredients. Rafters, or cords, those are the four individual pieces of lumber, gussets, fasteners, and adhesive. I'll explain more about these as we go, but for now, I'll let you know that I'm using two by six lumber for my rafters, half inch plywood for my gussets, one and a half inch nails, one and five eighths inch screws, and construction adhesive. There are more complicated methods to making a truss like this, but I'm using a pretty simple approach in cutting my trusses. All of my rafter ends are cut at 22.5 degrees. When you multiply that by four rafter pieces, you get 90 degrees. If you were to continue this all the way around, you'd end up with an octagon. This provides a nice rounded roof shape and the rafters can be adjusted in length to give you the amount of height and width you need for your roof. Now I'm making a 10 by 16 shed. So my measurements are designed to end up with 10 foot wide trusses. I would recommend looking online for exact measurements for your size of shed. There are plenty of free resources out there. I'm going to be spacing my trusses at 24 inches on center. In order to cover the entire 16 foot length, I'll need nine trusses. I'm also adding a 10 inch overhang on either end, but I'm not building the trusses for those in this video. Those are much simpler and they're made of two by fours. I'll add those in a future video. So let's get into the details of how I'm making these. So I already completed one truss. That was the hardest part, getting all the measurements correct. What we have here is a series of 22.5 degree angles cut into each one of these two by sixes. I'm using two by sixes. I was initially gonna use two by fours, but decided to make it stronger. So 22.5 degree angles on each end of these two by sixes. Even down here, that's gonna get you flat with the ground. It has this notch cut out in the bottom. That's three and a half inches and then six inches down. And it's gonna be a, a five inch overhang. So the uh, roof sheathing is gonna come on top of here. Shingles and then a five plus inch overhang. I'm making the trusses before installing the walls because it's really easy and helpful to use the uh, floor that has already been established as a template to show you exactly how wide the, uh, the roof is actually gonna be. So that's why I did it before putting the walls up. I'll show you the process. So these are the pieces I'm using for my trusses. There's gonna be four pieces to it. Two of these, which are four feet long at the longest end. They have 22 and a half degree cuts on each corner, on each end. So 22 and a half degrees cut at opposing angles on each end. So there's the top side is long, the bottom side is short. So two of those. And then two of these, these are slightly longer. 
you start out with a 54 and a half inch piece of two by six, cut a 22 and a half degree angle on one end, and then on the other end, same thing, another 22 and a half inch angle. Bottom here, we're going to have just about a five inch overhang. So that's a five inch overhang over the uh, exterior walls of our building. Um, it also comes just the standard three and a half inches in, which is the standard width of a two by four. And it's going to go down just a hair over six inches. So six inches up, three and a half inches in, and that gives us a five inch overhang. Now that I have one, I'm gonna mark it out on my two by four, on my two by sixes here. Way easier than measuring over and over again. So this is my template. I'm gonna trace that. These are the gussets I'm using. The gussets are pieces that hold the individual pieces of the truss together at the corners. I'm using half inch plywood. Um, I also have this half inch T111 siding left over from another project. And the gussets, uh, they have 22 and a half degree angles at the top. If you've never used a speed square before, it's a great way to find the angles. I won't be a giving you a full tutorial on a speed square. There's plenty of good videos on that, but basically you take your speed square, put it along the uh, ridge of the piece of material that you're going to cut, and then turn it back, pivot it off of the corner to the angle that you want. And if you look here, you have your angles marked along the bottom. So you come to 22 and a half, one, two and a half, and that's going to be your 22 and a half degree angle. Anyway, easy enough to find your angles for the uh, roof pitch. Um, the side trusses I'm using are 16 inches wide and the top truss is a little over 12 inches wide. Once I had one good one made, um, it's very simple to just trace it you know you're using your half inch plywood and you just trace it and then you can cut those out lickety split so anyway those are my gussets um, if you want more detailed information as to how to make a gusset there's plenty of good videos for that now that I have all my measurements completed and one entire truss cut to size I just trace and cut all the remaining pieces I'll need so that my production can go fast by the way I mentioned in my last video that Home Depot and Lowe's sell their cull wood or scrap wood at a 70% discount. I've got a bunch of those pieces, including some 2x8 material that I'm cutting down to 2x6. 
I even have some lumber that I got for free on Facebook Marketplace. All this to say, there's plenty of ways to save money when you're building your own shed, without compromising strength or quality. Now that all my pieces are cut, I'll walk you through the process of building one entire truss. One really helpful tip is once you have one truss completed, lay it on the floor and build yourself a jig, just screwing in some scrap wood just to frame it out. And then next time you put the individual pieces in, you just have to slide them right into the jig. It makes it so much easier. For my gussets, I'm using construction adhesive first. Putting two screws in of these one and five eighths screws. And then six of these one and a half inch roof nails in an even consistent pattern. if I said six or six on each side, but anyway, it's 12 total on each gusset. Now that it's nice together, I'm going to take it out and flip it over. I'm going to do the gussets on the other side. All but two of my nine trusses will have gussets on both sides. The final trusses on either end of the building will only have gussets on the inside of the truss because the outside will have wall sheathing nailed directly to it. Like I said, I'm making nine of these trusses. If you wanted to make your roof even stronger, you could go 16 inches on center on your trusses. Not really necessary, but it's up to you depending on how you want to make your roof. If I had gone with two by four trusses, I definitely would have gone 16 inches on center. But with the two by sixes, I felt that it was very strong for my purposes. Build one or two really good trusses, and then just repeat the process until you have as many as you want. So that's it for how to build the trusses. Uh, today's a good day to show you this. It actually started raining before I finished the video, but these aren't gonna be used for a while. You don't install the trusses until the walls are framed out. So set them to the side, keep them level so they don't get warped or damaged, and put a tarp over them to protect them from the rain. If you have any comments or thoughts as to how I made my trusses, maybe you have an idea of how to make it better, please leave them in the comment section below. But in the next video, I'm going to start framing the walls. So please subscribe if you want to see that one. Uh, please like the video if you liked it. And until next time, I'm Ever the Carl, and I'll see ya.